welcome back and here we have a very short video on basic biomechanics and this videos that we discuss this topics that we discuss in basic biomechanics are frequently asked questions with respect to the general biomechanics chapters mostly three marks or five marks questions with respect to your pattern of examination in your respective universities so these are very important topics that we discuss over here with respect to your examination point of view and today we have the force and force vector as our topic of discussion this would be interesting to the ones those who like physics and who have scored 1995 in your 10th or 9th physics examinations and perhaps in your 11th physics examination too but still even if you don't like physics we will study in an easy manner here in biomechanics and this topic Topic force and force vectors will help you not only to, not only to gain these three marks with respect to this question but also help you to attend the question of a linear force system and concurrent force system which we will discuss in the subsequent videos and right let us right now focus on to force and force vectors in the most simplified manner right <music> What is force? You know that force is defined uh, as a push or pull on an object. What is force? It is a push or pull on an object. If they ask you what is force vector for three marks, there is nothing you have to write about three marks in that. You just have to mention about force. If they ask you force, it just it is better you go with force vector. So because both of them lies together or is same part of our to echo in. Okay. So force is defined as a push or a pull on an object or when two objects comes in contact with each other, both of them exert a force, a push or pull on each other. That is, for example, when I'm conducting this wall, it's not just that I exert a force on the wall, men on the wall it is not just that it is uh, there is a same force exerted by the wall back onto my hand which you know as per the newton's laws of motion is correct and uh, not down that newton's law of motion is definitely a question with respect to basic biomechanics and they can ask you even that for a 10 marks which if you are interested we'll discuss in the upcoming video just let me know in the comment section right now so force is defined as a push or pull of an object that's the first statement second one is that every object which comes in contact must exert a force on both object that is the object a will exert a force on b and b will exert another force in relation to a not just that it is one acting on the other but it is both of them exerts a force on each other one may be the action and another may be the reaction force or one is the action and another is a reaction which we call in newton's laws of motion action reaction pair okay that's just an added knowledge so we define force as a push or pull of an object and every object which are conduct each other must exert a force on each other or must exert a force on both of them right so uh, we have an equation in physics for the force which you are which you might be very uh, familiar which is equal to force is equal to mass into acceleration where we can say that force is directly proportional to mass of an object as well as its uh, acceleration mass into acceleration so this is another uh, definition of the force as per the physics part of view that is force is a product of mass into acceleration or a force of an object is directly proportional to mass and acceleration and you know the formula for mass it is usually expressed in kilogram and you know the formula for acceleration it is a meter per second square so we get the unit of force as a kilogram meter per second square which is what is the unit it is known as the unit is known as newton so this is how we define in biomechanics or we use no we don't use kilogram meter per second but instead we use this denotation that is force is expressed as newton si unit of force is newton okay 
in uh, your system it is also known as pounds it is also known as pounds so force is expressed as newton and force is also expressed as found pounds which is denoted by lb newton is denoted by capital letter n okay and now what is uh, weight of an object because these are the things that you might come across in your gate parameters in your gate chapter and you need to understand what are the things that you are going to deal with what is weight of a body weight of the body is mass into the gravitational force acting which you all might have studied earlier in your lessons when your physics classes this is weight is equal to mass into gravity right of course we did not gray uh, weight by kilogram right we define weight by the term kilogram but if you want to convert it into Newton one kilogram equal to 9.8 Newton one kilogram force is equal to 9.8 Newton why do you need this one because have you studied the chapter gate uh, hip complex that you had unilateral bilateral cane calculations and there you had to denote the thing in Newton the problem that many of my students uh, many of my viewers Start, uh, informed was that sir that calculation is so tough that is because you take some value like 878 73 newton which is so tough for you to do even if especially if you have the mathematics as a um, fearful dream okay and here you can simplify it just by taking some easy value for example you just take 120 uh, what do you call it, kilogram body weight that's fine who can tell you that you did the wrong answer unless they give in examination that calculate with the 873 newton you can take any example okay or even if they give you this in this one you can convert it into new uh, kilogram and do in a convenient manner and later on the final answer just multiply into 9.81 newton and you get the answer in newton you can do it in that way so you need to remember the value of one kilogram is equal to 9.8 newton this might be asked in your mcq questions with respect to uh, pg entrance etc and one kilogram is is equal to 2.2 uh, pounds also this also you have to remember one kilogram is is also equal to 2.2 pounds also okay one kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds which may brings down one newton is equal to 4.4 pounds this you need not remember but you try to remember both of these conversions because this are quite important when you come across some uh, examinations or some examples like a cane force calculations right now so we have defined a very few basic important parameters of the force and now we straight away forward to the next aspect where we we know that uh, this is a very simple concept we know that the force can be of two types acting on the body which can be internal and external forces and you know what is external force any force that is acted on by an external source is known as an external source okay for example when i'm touching this wall the force exerted by wall back on my hand is an external force but more conveniently we can take a very um, phenomenal and very consistent external force that acts always in the body that is a gravity where do you apply this you apply it in the gate parameter chapter you apply in a shoulder joint static and dynamic stabilization you have seen gravity acting downwards so gravity is a very consistent external force that acts on the human body right the other forces can you give me examples of other forces of external force for example the wind that acts is an external force the water that pushes the body is an external force on anything if for example your friend comes and push push you or pull you that is also an external force any source or any force which is acting from an external object is known as an external force usually external force either creates or restricts the motion for example when you're walking somebody pushes you from the back you just go you just uh, um, skip off right you just skip off for example when you have when you're walking or when you're running you see an obstacle you just go and touch on it your motion is being restricted so the external forces can either restrict or cause the motion or produce or uh, restrict or uh, pro uh, produce the motion okay these are the points I shouldn't need to mention if they ask you forces 
have to write down that SI unit and those conversion and then just move on to there are two types of forces one is external which is forced by and some object outside the body and then you have the gravitational force right now yes and then we have the internal forces which are forces produced by the body with produced in the body or within the body itself can you give me an example the biceps contraction that is a muscle contraction is an example of uh, external internal force another example the ligaments okay the pull by the ligaments is an example the tendon pull is an example whatever is the force that acts on the body within the body is an example for internal force for example you can even tell bone is an example for producing internal force how in your tibia femoral joint you have the tibia femur over here you have the tibia over here the force exerted by femur from top to bottom when there is a weight bearing that's an example of uh, internal forces so internal forces can either be generated by the muscle ligaments tendons other connective tissues bones etc anything within the body now what about the inter external forces if external forces can produce motion or stop motion what can internal forces produce they can initiate the motion for example you want to run your muscles are not working are you going to run no it's not going to happen the initiation of the motion is usually done by your internal forces and more than that your internal forces are also capable of producing or restricting or re-modifying your the force produced the movement produced by external forces for example when you're running uh, with a heavy speed or when you're running down a hill okay you need not exert much of the force because the gravitational force is downwards the slope of the hill is downwards and that can give you the momentum but at the same time you can stop with the help of your muscle because the muscle which is an internal force can help you contract in such a manner that you can stop the uh, running yes this is usually seen when you can see that uh, when some patients walk downhill sometimes they just slip off that is because their internal forces cannot uh, compensate that momentum that is being generated because some of the muscles are not functioning so internal forces can either initiate a motion or they can restrict or re-modify or accelerate the motion produced by external forces that's all about the force concept and you have to add on one thing you know that every object which touch on one another or any object which touch another will produce a force and then what about the gravity is gravity touching you and how do you see that the gravity is an external force and is it an exception to the Newton's not norm because we generalize the fact that uh, and we consider that gravity touches all the objects that's on earth because it's accepted by the earth and thus we see that or we consider every object on the body uh, earth is actually being touched by the gravity so that is a generalization which will help you to answer some of the MCQ question if they ask you is gravity an external force yes is gravity a contacting force it's actually no but we consider and we generalize gravity as a contacting force on the body right now straight away moving to the next concept which is uh, the next important one uh, sometimes they might ask you what is force and force vector or mostly you have seen them asking what is force vector you have to define what is force vector and you know that what is a vector quantity it's a force with some it's a quantity with some direction so force is a vector quantity first you have to write it uh, force is a vector quantity it's better you define what is force it's a push or pull on an object and you write down what is internal and external forces and you just write down what is SI unit of force which is Newton so force is a vector quantity so usually a vector has three important parameters you, you do not have to miss it you should not miss it that is the one is um, it should have a base okay it should have a base which is the point of application which is the point of application of the force for example if you have if you have a force uh, over here this in point is known as the base or point of application that's the first thing then it has an arrow head it has an arrowhead and direction it has an arrowhead and shaft okay it has an arrowhead and shaft you know what is shaft for example from this force if i expand it in this direction this is the shaft of that force and this is the arrowhead 
what is the arrowhead indicates it says that this is the direction of force for example when there is a force acting on the human body this is the right hand side this is the left hand side for example and there is a force acting in this direction you can say that the force is acted on to the left hand side with the help of this arrow if that arrow is not there uh, for example that same force and drawing it like this can you tell me uh, which is the point of application it can be in this direction or this direction so this arrowhead indicates the direction of the force this is very important when you write down or when you draw your internal moments external moments with respect to your gate parameter chapter so an arrowhead and a direction or an arrowhead and a shaft better you write it and an arrowhead and a shaft which shows the direction of a force direction of a force and the third important parameter that it has is a magnitude is a magnitude that is the uh, the amount of the force that act the amount of the force that is expressed with the help of the length of that force vector for example we write down this length is as the the force magnitude 2 no 10 2 no 10 force we can try it out as the uh, magnitude either in length or in no 10 so this indicates the magnitude of the force so as a force vector has three important parameter one is a base or a point of application the second one is an arrowhead and a shaft which indicates the direction and a length which indicates the magnitude of the force or a magnitude which indicates the length or amount or quantity of the force so these are the three important parameters so if you are asked force vector you have to just write what is force and then go on to explain these three important parameters of the force and just write down with help of a simple example like this this is the base of the this is the arrowhead this is the direction and this is the magnitude so we got the three important parameters now, for example, when you have a weight cuff or when you when a duster is in my hand and this duster is exerting a downward pull, how do you write the force? This is important when you write down your forces in the internal moment, external moment in posture and gait. For example, when this body is exerting a force on my hand, I will write like a duster on hand. How, how will I write? I will write like a duster on my hand. Okay. I will write like a duster on hand. Okay. D O H. Maybe like that. Okay. Always we define or we refer the first quantity as the quantity which exert the force. We don't write hand on the duster. Hand on duster if a duster is exerting the downward pull. Always the first one will be the force that is acting on okay for example we have a weight cuff something on a weight cuff in my hand a weight tied in my hand and it is exerting a downward pull we define weight cuff on hand for example if i'm holding a coffee mug on my hand i write it down mug on hand we don't write hand on the mug we exert we denote the force which causes the motion or which is the most important one that is creating that uh, uh, resultant or result over the so always we write it that so gravity on hand we write on we don't write hand on gravity we write gravity on hand okay we write gravity on hand if we write quadriceps force on the um, femur quadriceps on femur we don't write femur on quadriceps so always the first quantity denotes or the force that is creating that motion or the major force in that region so we wind up this session in the upcoming video we will see linear force system and concurrent force system which are also important with respect to your examination point of view and if you like the video as always i tell kindly like click the like button and subscribe to your channel and don't forget to follow us on the instagram so that you get free mcq and other information daily the link is given below in the description